Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, so first, I will show you um, the Inspire 5 uh, mission. It is UVSQSAT. Uh, we would like to thank uh, Lorraine because he helped us a lot of time for this mission. Um, UVSQSAT, is, it is an, an Inspire satellite. So as you know, there is seven spacecraft, including in this um, consortium. And we are in a um, task group in relation with COSPAR uh, related to, to these topics. So um, 24 January, uh, there is two launch of spacecraft, um, Inspire 5 and Inspire 2. They were on the same launcher. Um, what we would like to do, it is a constellation. So we start with a small spacecraft. The name is UVSQSAT Inspire 5. And now we, we work on uh, Inspire Sat 7. But we are also involved in Aerosat, which is um, a three-unit three CubeSat that need to be in orbit in uh, 2024 or 2025. And Inspire 7, we would like to launch it in 2022. Uh, what, what is the main objective of INSPIRE 5? We have science objective, Earth observation. Uh, we have also education and outreach. And to finish, we have also technology demonstration. So since the beginning of this mission, we publish uh, seven manuscripts related to this mission. Uh, mainly uh, about technology, but also method, and in relation also with solar physics and uh, Earth's radiative budget. Uh, we have a strong feedback in relation with space um, physics. So I was involved in solar SolSpec on board International Space Station. It is a spectrometer, so I was PI of this mission. Uh, we are also involved on PICAR, which is a microsatellite with five uh, instrumentation. And uh, I was also involved on ground-based observatory uh, because we are very interesting sometimes to have a link between ground-based observatory and solar and space-based observatory. And more generally, uh, I was involved in a lot of space-based mission since the last 25 years. So um, we study many, many missions uh, related to uh, space observation. Um, we push a new strategy in relation with research and development, education and innovation. And we are very interesting to, to have more, more company, more industrial company uh, involved in our um, development. Um, so we push, we push a new space because it's a method for quickly address, um, addressing case scientific problems. And it is a very attractive opportunity because um, we can have a strong link with international cooperation mission. So in the top of the picture, you can see a French um, drawing that says we need to take more risks. So small sat is interesting, but it is a lot of risk for doing this approach. Um, we have also a lot of synergy uh, with uh, industry. So it's a very interesting approach uh, for us. So I will pass that one. So I will show directly the main motivation and after we'll go to the technology. So my main mo motivation for me it is climate change. So in the top picture, you can see evolution of the average temperature change since 2000 years. And we can see the fast increase for the last 50 years. And we see also the very rapid increase in the concentration of greenhouse gases, right? like CO2, methane, and uh, protoxide of azote. So impact of climate change, we know what is it. Huh? There is a lot of heat waves, and this effect will increase with the next years. We see also the rising sea levels and the impact of the sea ice area uh, since 1982 to uh, 2012 for these pictures. Um, we see also impact of effect at regional scales. 
if we see the increase of temperature, it is not the same if you are in Asia or if you are um, in uh, Antarctic. So this impact is very important because we could modify uh, local climate and have impact on the population. So there is also impact on biodiversity and also crop yields. So climate change is a huge problem. And we think that small sat could help to understand what we obtain and to find solution or mitigation solution um, to limit the effect. So we do also simulation. And for simulation, it is an example of our simulation related to global temperature evolution and impact at the end of the 2,100 years. And you can see it's possible to have seven degrees C increase. And if it is true, this one could be a very, very big problem for the humanity. So in this slide, we see all impact of volcanic forcing, solar irradiance forcing, and all other forcing. And we see, again, uh, that solar forcing is normal, but impact is very, very small. But the impact of greenhouse gases is a strong impact. So with simulation, you can see the movie. Uh, we see evolution of the temperature until 2100. And we can see the, the impact of the CO2 and effect of human activities on the increase of the temperature of the Earth. This is a simulation. And if we see what's happened during the past, for the 800,000 years, Past, we see that we have natural variation and for our um, evolution for the next 100 years we see that it's possible to have same same impact in variation and with a very fast variation so it is now well established that climate is changing and that greenhouse gas concentration have reached record level and will continue to increase very rapidly and this is why we push uh, small sat um, because we are interested in constellation so i will go to 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 the uvs qsat constellation objective so to see how possible to do something which is new we need to observe essential climate variable one very interesting essential climate variable is earth energy imbalance if we can have something with a very good spatial resolution with a few kilometers it could be very very important and it could be very attractive for science application and we study also ultraviolet solar spectral irradiance this one is very important also because it could have a link with ozone but also with uh, local climate so in this um, table we can see what is uh, a very uh, attractive scientific topic. Uh, if we can monitor Earth's energy imbalance at plus minus 0.1 watt per square meter with a stability per decade close to this value, this one could be a, a very uh, high um, topics for science. So uh, first science mission goal, it is Earth's radiative budget. So I already explained that one. Uh, we have in this uh, simulation uh, interest of the constellation. If you see what's happened, I, I need to, to copy all the time my, my movie because there is no link because I changed my computer. Okay. So if you see what's happened, if we have only one um, CubeSat in Orbin or one small sat with a small field of view, you can see the reconstruction of the map. And if you have a big field of view on the right side of the screen, you can see evolution of the observation with one um, spacecraft in orbit. And you can see the residual net flux between what you want to observe and you, what you can uh, have for the reconstruction of the um, observation. And you can see it is problematic with only one spacecraft to observe what we are or what we want to do. So if we go 
to the next slide, you can see what we have. If we are with four spacecraft, we can go very fast to a reconstruction of the map and to obtain um, the observations that could be very good for scientific topics. So, multipoint observation is a very important thing to do. For that one, we need to have a lot of spacecraft to resolve diurnal variation and to have a lot of um, local time at ascending node of all spacecraft. Uh, this one is a small table to see what could be important for a constellation. So, with spatial resolution, with temporal resolution, and with all parameter measurement and absolute uncertainty for outgoing shortwave radiation, outgoing longwave radiation, and Earth energy imbalance. For ultraviolet solar irradiance, mechanism is more complex because we have a top-down ultraviolet flux that eat the stratosphere layers. And we have a warming at the stratosphere layer and all effect in regional scale. So you can see the mechanism shown in the figure in the top of uh, the screen. So on the bottom, uh, we publish a paper with LASP, with Martin Snow, uh, related to a table of all solar spectral irradiance variability for all the, space, uh, the spectrum. And we are interested to follow this measurement and to see the evolution. And again, we think that with CubeSat, it's possible to do that one. So for next step, you see evolution with time. And we don't know if we have a trend in the decrease of the solar spectral irradiance. And that one could suggest an approaching ground solar minimum, which is possible. And that one could have an effect, which have a small effect on global temperature of the Earth, but could be interesting to see if we have uh, an evolution of that one. So second problematic is to see the effect of multi-decadal observation and to have some time a spacecraft or a constellation of spacecraft that could be launched and sometimes some recovery period between two launch of constellation to have full-time observation of this uh, essential climate variable. So strategy. Eh? First step is to uh, develop a small spacecraft, a one unit, for example, which is Inspire 5, to go to a more complex uh, spacecraft, Inspire Sat 7, and to imagine to obtain uh, a satellite constellation of 100 CubeSat. Uh, for strategy, we have also uh, a very strong requirement related to ground based. Um, station so we have that one with uh, international partner like united states singapore and taiwan for us is a very good partnership uh, we need to test uh, as soon as possible um, this station because we have already a spacecraft in orbit and we'd like to test uh, the ground station to see how possible to, uh, to 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 download data not only in france but in another country uh, we have addi additional international network related to SATNOGS, so they help us. Uh, they do a very good job. Uh, we have now a short description of the CubeSat. So what we have inside the CubeSat, it is a small one unit CubeSat. We have all classic um, units for a spacecraft from a magneto torqueur board to a payload board and all uh, payload sensors. So CubeSat, the mass of this CubeSat is 1.6 kilogram. Uh, we did not have an active uh, ADCS, so we have a passive system. And uh, we have a power consumption close to 1.6 Watt. So in this picture, you can see what we have inside. So if we go from all CubeSat element, in green, we have the uh, magneto torqueur board. After we go to uh, the electronic power supply board in cyan color, 
we go to the transmission uh, electronic board in gray. We have an onboard computer and a daughter board for communication with the spacecraft. So we use GPO uh, link, uh, SPI, SPI bus and I2C bus. And we have after the payload board, and we had to the payload board uh, a, a central of inertia that we develop ourselves to have ma magnitude of the Earth accelerometer and gyroscope. And at the top, we have solar panel and all element and the structure. For the payload, we uh, add um, photodiode in each face of the CubeSat. This photodiode that have um, a responsivity between 200 nanometer to uh, 1000 nanometer. That one could help us to observe uh, total solar irradiance. <coughs> we have a uh, ultraviolet photodiode at close to 220 nanometer with a full width at half maximum close to 10 nanometer. That one could help us to monitor solar spectral irradiance in the Earth-Bear continuum. And we have in each face of the CubeSat Earth radiative sensors based on thermopile. And we develop a technology with carbon nanotube and with optical solar reflector to monitor incoming solar radiation, outgoing terrestrial radiation, but also uh, outgoing shortwave radiation. This one is a short movie that you can see what we do during uh, during uh, these two years. Designed by LATMOS, UVSQ SAT is a French nano satellite dedicated to the observation of the Sun and the Earth. Its objective is to collect data on the Earth's energy imbalance that determines climate change. This energy imbalance is mainly caused by the increase of CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. UVSQ SAT fits in the hands and weighs less than two kilograms. Yet, it carries the hopes of the scientists, engineers, and technicians of LATMOS and OVSQ. With this nano satellite, the team aims to implement a constellation of small satellites to better understand the mechanism of global warming. A constellation of many small satellites would make it possible to finally capture the spatiotemporal variations in the Earth's energy imbalance at the top of the atmosphere and the parameters that control them. These data are fundamental for testing climate models. About the size of a Rubik's Cube, UVSQ SAT is equipped with a multitude of sensors inherited from the technological progress of miniaturization to measure the three terms of the Earth's radiation balance. Solar radiation arriving on the Earth, solar radiation reflected by the Earth, and infrared radiation emitted by the Earth. The mission is therefore multiple. This small concentrates of cutting edge technology thus makes it possible to collect important information on the Earth's radiation balance, i.e. the energy it gains and loses, particularly on a regional scale. This collection is carried out by measuring during at least one year these three terms of radiation to validate the principle of this miniaturization in view of the deployment of a heterogeneous constellation of small satellites. In addition, the mission also performs very delicate measurements of solar radiation in the ultraviolet range, whose variability directly impacts ozone and temperature in the Earth's middle atmosphere and could thus influence the meteorology of the lower atmosphere on a regional scale. Finally, this mission will test a medical device for astronauts' health prevention through the TeachWare program. This program should ultimately help preserve their health with diagnostic and decision support tools in complex situations during long duration missions, for example, to Mars. UVSQ SAT is thus the first flight laboratory for this sensor, placed under the responsibility of Carter Ruxell and piloted by LATMOS, thanks to its space know how. The UVSQ SAT mission is part of the INSPIRE program and is part of an international cooperation. An awareness raising and outreach program has been implemented in schools and associations. The goal is to encourage vocations among the youngest members of the community. The UVSQ SAT mission is composed of academics, industrials and students from various disciplines and backgrounds. 
the UVSQ SAT team has been able to benefit from the unfailing support of many professional bodies. The UVSQ SAT mission addresses three interrelated domains, research, industry, and education. In the latter case, the researchers collaborated with about 50 students to train them in the testing and assembly of the various satellite components, the development of the simulation tools needed to perform the in-orbit testing, and the preparation of the scientific exploitation of the data. During the satellite's environmental tests, LATMOS was able to benefit from the assistance of the Guiancourt test platform, CNES and ONERA. After a multitude of tests and calibration trials, the satellite acquired sufficient technological maturity to be put into orbit. UVSQ SAT took off aboard SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. It was launched into orbit in January 2021. Eventually, the LATMOS team does not intend to stop there. By 2022, it hopes to launch at least one more satellite to begin building a heterogeneous constellation capable of more accurately measuring the Earth's energy imbalance and thus future climate trends. Thanks to nanosatellites, it seems increasingly possible to revolutionize the space field by reducing costs and development cycles to respond much more quickly to scientific needs. So that's the short presentation that see what we can do. Um, I will go now to um, general description. So we start the project uh, beginning of 2018. Uh, system was launched in January, 20, in January 2021. Uh, in this view, you can see all partnerships that we have. So sometimes it was difficult because uh, we can we can have um, displacement outside France because there is a uh, sanitary crisis. So we, so we need to push uh, the development in our country ourselves sometimes. So first step, we do um, simulation. Simulation is CAD design and finite element model uh, for doing all mechanical analysis. We do ourselves also thermal analysis to see the impact. We do electrical design, optical design. Uh, we do simulation to see what, what is the impact of um, all energetic uh, impact on the power consumption and also uh, all uh, observation for the budget link of the communication. And what is good also, we do satellite mock-up. It is very important to have mock-up. Uh, you can see a picture of a mock-up. This one is a final mock-up that we develop uh, to see uh, a beautiful view of the CubeSat inside what we obtain. Uh, we have in the top picture, so it means the picture we use also a big screen for doing a, a, a multiple of engineering analysis. So this is very interesting to have this big, big screen for um, for teaching, but also for um, doing some multiple engineering tasks. Uh, we developed the software uh, with uh, one guy of my team uh, with this tape. And after we go to integration, so you can see some picture of the integration. First electronic board is the uh, magneto torker board. The second one is the uh, electronic power supply. So sometimes we use um, commercial uh, element and we uh, push to have some um, modification about the component. And in other time, we develop ourselves the electronic board. And we do all assembly ourselves. We do uh, the software ourselves because we need to have a control for scientific topics of that one. Uh, you can see uh, the third electronic board which is an electronic board from the ISIS company for the communication. And we go like this until all integration to the top um, for the um, solar cells. So we have an example about the solar cells with um, the connectics. So we modify that one because there is some hole in the structure. Uh, if you can see here, we have a hole because we need to have observation of our photodiode and from this hole. And we have some element here to add our thermopiles on the solar uh, cells. 
And we use the technology um, with the map sealed coating because we need to protect after uh, the uh, solar cells. So that one is the technology to, to, to develop the solar cells uh, using a base with Azure Space um, solar cells. Uh, this one is an example of the um, nanotube of carbon. So we, we, we put the nanotube of carbon on copper element and after we cut, we cut the element and we glue this part on a thermopile and you can see an example on the picture. Uh, we have also optical glass, optical solar reflector is optical element. So we test to um, cut it with that one and after we, we, we use a solution with a laser cut. Uh, we develop ourselves also the photodiode, so it is an example of the mask. So we design the mask, we develop the mask and we manufacture the photodiodes using a technology and help of uh, five uh, French uh, company for doing that one from the design to uh, the manufacture of the component. And what is uh, very interesting with this component, it is with beta uh, GA2, uh, uh, this is the uh, beta GA2 or three uh, element material, which is uh, uh, a component which has no impact normally uh, with aging and radiation in orbit. Uh, and the last one, we, we develop um, uh, a central of inertia, and this, this one is fully operational in orbit. So it is a very small, compact um, uh, central of inertia, because at the beginning, we would like to start with the MEMSENSE um, inertia system, so IMU, but the power consumption of this element is very high. So we develop ourselves this uh, technology. Uh, that one is a view of our payload electronic board. Um, we have uh, the payloads that do the communication with the onboard computer and to do the connection with all the sensors of the spacecraft. And we had uh, uh, a front end electronic for all um, sensor element because we need to have very quickly a transformation of the current of the element to voltage because when you have wires it is not good for the signal because we have very uh, sensitive uh, sensors. Uh, after we do the test so we have uh, a lot of facilities we have two, 270 square meter uh, clean room we have a shaker we have a thermal and optical vacuum chamber so all, all of these systems are in our uh, in our laboratories uh, we do also calibration with uh, a system like black body and we do characterization. That one is the characterization of the BRDF, so B reflectance distribution function. And for carbon nanotube, we do the test with a gonio photometer and it is excellent because it is very flat and the response of nanotube of carbon is excellent. Uh, we have also carry 5000 UV vis near system to monitor um, solar spectral reflectance in relation with wavelengths. So it could be diffuse or specular. And we go to the launch. For, for the launch, we have, like you, a lot of things to do because we respect a, a system in orbit. So we need to have an ODAR, so orbital debris assessment report. We need to respect the French law for the orbiting system. We need to have declaration of the spacecraft. We need to provide the uh, ICD, interface control document. We need to do end user statement. We need to do IRU uh, frequency coordination request. And now I have my license because uh, I, am, I am also radio amateur. And we do all impact in relation with insurance because we need to pay when you have a system in orbit. Uh, we, we develop also a full ground base station for communication. You can see our station. Uh, we start with analogic solution. This solution is the TS2000, but we stop it. We go directly to a numerical solution. So that one is uh, uh, a solution that we develop for a uh, mission operation center. So we use um, all these parts, so IASU system for rotator, IASU for rotator controller, we have azimutal elevation rotators, 
Uh, we use Yagi Antenna, UHF Amplifier, and we use SDR Radio um, Nuelec solution, and we have uh, SAT PC uh, 32 and SDR Sharp for doing that one. And uh, our solution is stable. Uh, for emission, uh, we use a SDR radio solution, a low pass filter and a pre amplifier. And we use this solution. And this one is also um, operational. Huh? We have no problem with this system. Uh, we develop also the mission operation center because we need to go directly to the scientific products. Um, and after, I have a PhD student that work with me. Uh, we have sometimes some uh, master student, but also student from engineering schools. Uh, it depends sometimes from polytechnic schools, which is a high French engineering school, but also from Estaca and also from Central Supélec. Um, we do some um, lectures uh, outside our country, so I do that one in Armenia because we have Erasmus Plus. Uh, program and we do also the same things in, in Algeria uh, you can see here some picture of Algeria and in the observatory of Algeria so we do that one and when you have um, spacecraft in orbit it's very interesting because people are very uh, interesting to uh, to see um, what we can develop with the CubeSat so this is final picture about integration. You can see what we do during this integration. Uh, what is very difficult is the size. It is too small. So there is a lot of wires inside the system. Here you can see again a picture when we add all elements inside the CubeSat. I think you see the same with your CubeSat. It's problematic. Here you can see how we manufacture the solar cells, how we glue uh, electronic um, board on the solar cell structure. So it is very compact, it is very complex to do the integration. So I will pass that one so you can see a lot of picture about our development. So here you can see when we clamp a system and here you can see when we do all connection of the CubeSat. Again, some picture. No, I go in back direction. So for that one, you will see when we do the So we do the test of vibration and we have no problem. So we have our shaker and we have our system for the vibration of the system. Uh, we do a test of uh, magnetic uh, cleanliness of the CubeSat. So we use the Helmholtz cage. So you can see it is a big room. So we test the CubeSat in operating mode and we see uh, what is the magnetic direction of the CubeSat and if we have a strong uh, magnetic direction of the CubeSat, we need to clean it. Okay. And this element on the right side provides us the magnetic field of the Earth and with this installation, we stop it and like this we can do the test. Again, a test, and when we do the test and the correction, uh, axial moment, it is very small. Uh, so that one is to not have a problem in orbit with the CubeSat that uh, have a big uh, tumble in orbit. So we do also um, thermal vacuum test and thermal balance test, which is not the same. Thermal vacuum test is to see the limit of the system. Thermal balance test is to see what could be the temperature in orbit. And full time, we have contamination element because we follow uh, which contamination we could have in orbit. So we follow the um, hydrocarbon element or equivalent, and we have a contamination plan. Uh, this one is during the uh, thermal vacuum test. We do also electromagnetic compatibility okay. test. So we have an echoic um, chamber, so you can see here uh, what we do. For next test, we need to have a more uh, wide um, spectrum because we go very, very fast during the test. 
uh, to see the impact. And this test was also uh, successful. So after we we do to uh, we go to an end to end test. So what we do during the end to end uh, test? We do uh, uh, we go to the um, we go outside and we go to the more upper um, altitude that we can have uh, in Paris. And after we test, we test the CubeSat with uh, our ground station to see if we have a problem of communication. So here we have two students that go to the summit of our mountain, which is not at high altitude, but could be interesting. And we do that one to test communication between CubeSat, which is in our lab, or which could be at the summit of this mountain to see the, the test. I will pass that one. And after we do also calibration test with um, a solar simulator, we have also um, a black body element. And with that one, we can do simulation of the Earth, simulation of the sun, and to see uh, the response of all our sensors. And you can see here, example, when we are with a computer, with a solar simulator, we use a Xeno lamp. And for ultraviolet observation, we, we use a deuterium lamp. Here you can see simulation with the sun. That one is a Newton telescope. You can see on the left, right side, the Xeno lamp. And after we go to the thermal balance test, thermal balance test is very important because we can see what we can have uh, in orbit for uh, um, a worst case, a cold case, and a hot case, and to see um, during all temperature variation the impact of the electronic because we can have a modification of all of, of, all of our amplifier. So we test it. So here you can see when we close the door, of our thermal vacuum chamber, which is a big thermal vacuum chamber. Okay, now I, I will go to the lunch and, and we'll finish. I have again more than, I need to have 10 minutes and I will finish. Uh, this is launch and exploitation. So this picture, I think you know it because the two CubeSat of the Inspire mission are inside this uh, Transporter 1 mission. You follow the launch of this uh, 143 uh, CubeSat. So first step, uh, this is the operation in orbit for us. We have launched on board SpaceX Falcon 9. After, we need to have confirmation of satellite release from PodSat. We go to antenna deployment and detumbling phase. After we go to satellite commissioning phase and we go to flight operation. Uh, first step, we have UVS CubeSat first beacon very fast, very soon, um, 40 minutes after um, release of the PodSat, we have the beacon, which is very clear, huh? you can see the 30 second step for each beacon. Uh, very soon we have information because uh, we use Grafana solution to plot uh, evolution of uh, our um, housekeeping data, uh, no problem also with that one. Uh, we see uh, that sometimes we have problem of connection or some people would like to communicate with our spacecraft. We don't know why, but we see some effect. We don't know if it is hacking or if it is uh, not hacking. Uh, this picture show you evolution of altitude of this orbit uh, until January to, to June. Uh, we select this orbit because we can go with another launcher, but we would like to go with this launcher because uh, the beta angle is very good. So that procure a very good stability in orbit and repeatability of the um, system. And when you do metrology, it's very good to have this orbit. This one show you um, temperature external structure variation, which is between minus 25 to plus uh, 45, which is very close to our thermal simulation. Uh, we can see here temperature variation of the system in orbit. Um, we can see also evolution of each temperature, but when we use the transmission electronic board, we see a very fast temperature increase of the oscillator of the communication board. So we can have 40 degrees C increase if we use full time this electronic board. 
Uh, antenna, temperature is very good. Uh, we follow the solar activity, and this is our specialty because it could have an impact. So since the beginning, we see four uh, single event units. So uh, we have four restart of the spacecraft during the five months in orbit. Uh, this one is again temperature evolution of the CubeSat, which is very normal and close to our simulation. Um, death of discharge of the battery is excellent. Uh, never we are less than 85%, so we are between 7.9 and 8 volts, so it is excellent, no discharge. This one shows uh, power in orbit variation uh, from um, standby mode to nominal mode. You can see here when we modify the mode. Um, when we have a gap, sometimes we have a problem because uh, um, we can go uh, full time in our lab. So we modify our system to can to to, to be able to send uh, data command um, without to be in the lab. Uh, so if you go here, you can see one SOU single event unit, two, three, and four. Uh, this one is temperature evolution of the system, and when you have an increase, we have a communication with the CubeSat. Huh? So we send the telecommand. So here you can see evolution, and it is very nominal in relation with power budget of the system. Payload voltage is okay. Um, for photodiodes, we have the flux. You can see full data. We have very a lot of data. Uh, since the beginning, we have two million of a frame of data uh, here you can see evolution of the signal with sun exposure eclipse sun exposure eclipse sun exposure eclipse and this one is elevation so you can see when we are below this dashed line we are in the eclipse uh, we have the same for the earth radiative sensors so we can see the evolution and we have the same for satellite attitude determination because we use uh, a multiplicative extended Kalman filter for attitude determination, but we do that one um, on ground to analyze the data and to have a very good information about the attitude of the CubeSat. Uh, we have the Earth magnetic field. We have the gyroscope evolution and accelero. I will finish with some results. So one, we use also a transporter, an audio transporter. So I don't know if it is available because I modify my code. Okay, for that one, what we do, we, we, we open the use of the uh, audio transporter of the CubeSat. So we do this, this test the 17th of May, and it was very good. It was operational. Huh? Uh, we test that one in Asia, in Indonesia, and in Japan, and they test it, and it was operational. Uh, this one, we do that one in Europe. QSL, QSL, two Mike zero Quebec Lima, the Fox Trot six kilo, radio kilo portable. Good morning. All our seven three from the Lacmos lab in France. Very happy to do this first contact with you. So you can see here evolution of audio data. So it is an example, and we use the CubeSat to communicate. So it was operational results. What we obtain results? This one is the magnetic field of the Earth obtained with our CubeSat. Uh, we have a map each day. Huh? So it's good for us. We do reconstruction. We do the same for outgoing long wave radiation. You can see the map, but also for albedo. Um, objective now for us is to see this evolution. We have five months in orbit. Uh, we hope to stay a long time in orbit 
and we hope to do probably with you um, another uh, system because now I develop a new um, spectrometer. It is an example of what I would like to develop. Uh, I do all the study um, to observe um, solar physics parameter, but also to observe um, greenhouse gases like methane or CO2 using a spectrometer a double monochromator. Uh, we have also some project in another relation or link um, um, with some optical system because we are specialists of this uh, development. So I, I have finished. I, I will conclude only with one thing. Uh, we need to test, test, test. During uh, in-orbit um, ejection of the launcher, uh, we see some problem uh, with the communication of the CubeSat, communication of the electronic board and with the ground station was a very huge topic for us and a complex topic for us because we see a problem with um, the modulation of the signal of our electronic board. And when we do the test um, on ground, uh, distance between CubeSat and uh, ground station was only to uh, something which is close to 20 kilometer distance. So when we do the test, it was very good. But when we were in orbit, we see that we have a problem. So we modify some element. We modify the modulation. And now we understand a lot of things. So what is very important to do is to test, test, and in in nominal condition or in more nominal condition because if you did not have same condition you will have a problem uh, after we need to design some simple system and robust system uh, we need to have a to build an experience team students are here to help us and we need to help students to provide to the all students some lecture with um, our experience but we need to have people who have experience if not it could be also problematic uh, we need also to have spare component because we see during the test sometimes you can burn something huh? so extra board could be good extra hardware um, at, at minimum what we do we do a day in the life testing communication link testing power system charge discharge testing thermal testing we do all the tests, but we don't do one test. We did not do the shock test. Why? Because I have seen sometimes that it could be uh, problematic because you can broken something. So uh, I don't do this test. It is not good, but we do uh, um, an impasse and it was successful because now the spacecraft is in orbit. But we do all other tests. Huh? And uh, this sentence is a sentence from Lauren. Lauren Cheng explained me all the time, we need to maintain a healthy scepticism on bonder subsystem data sheet. And I fully agree with him because we see that there is some time, some parameters which are not nominal or close to uh, uh, what we have um, on the system. So I, I have finished uh, if you have a question. Here is a picture of um, the people who work with us. So I have finished the um, presentation. I am open to the question. I am sorry for the problems that we have to the beginning. It's OK. Thank you very much, Mustafa. And congratulations on uh, what looks to be a very successful mission so far. So um, to the members of our audience, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat or raise your hand. So I think. Uh, for in both of our cases, this was our first uh, exposure to uh, small satellites, and uh, I know, and uh, we're actually very impressed, actually, that you were able to carry out the mission using uh, a, a one U CubeSat, given that, of course, that means you don't have very much space and, or uh, power generation. So, I was wondering if you could perhaps share with us some of the bigger challenges you encountered in designing uh, the uh, spacecraft. So your question is about the design. Uh, yeah, were there any particular challenges that you found uh, to be uh, particularly difficult when designing the uh, spacecraft? Yes, w what is very difficult for me, huh? we start, we would like to start with something which is very simple, that is a one unit CubeSat, but after we see that it is very complex, because it is too compact, first step, and the problem is also for the electronic. 
Um, when you have something which is very compact, you need to find amplifier with low, low noises. And another problem that we have is the power budget. So if you have a limitation with power budget, with um, noise of the electronics, and with also the volume, it um, could be better to start with the two or three unit. Mm -hmm. So what one unit is very complex. Huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually very impressed that you uh, managed to have a, a, a positive uh, power budget uh, using just one U with no active attitude control. Yes, yes, the, the power budget, we, we see that one since the beginning of the mission. So we have something which is close to 1.6 watt. When we use um, the electronic transmission um, communication board, uh, we can go up to uh, 5 watt mm. or 6 watt. Um, and for that one, so why we limit communication? Because full time, we did not want to have um, a stress of the component, uh, high temperature elevation, because limit for us in orbit of the component of the transmission communication board is 55 degrees C. So, yes, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. So for uh, InspireSat 7, you're moving to uh, 2U. So I was wondering uh, what some of the main differences will be between uh, 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 between uh, five and uh, seven. What are you going to use the extra space for? Well, for for us, Inspire Seven, what we do, and we will do topics that you will like. We we do also ionospheric studies. So what we have in Inspire Seven, I, I will show you if you want in another meeting. I can do also a presentation about this mission for you. So we will do the same that what we do in UVSQSAT, but we will add um, a, a amateur radio electronic board uh, with open source um, solution. Uh, for that one, it is a communication system. We will add also a LIFI connection. I, you know this uh, technology or not? LIFI. Uh, oh. It is to test uh, communication without wires. Oh, oh okay. And we will add also uh, an electronic for doing the um, ionospheric sounding because we will study the F layer of the ionosphere. And for that one, uh, we developed with a company in Spain, which is Allen Space. I don't know if you know this company. And we developed the Totem Electronic Board. And for this topic, we work with Onera. So we do the same, but we add uh, electronic board. And for example, for the power budget, we go from um, one dot uh, two uh, watt power budget to uh, three watt power budget. Okay. And why we go directly to the two unit because we need to have more volume. Huh? Understandable. Um, and uh, I also uh, thought it was uh, very interesting that you mentioned that uh, in France you're required to buy insurance for your uh, spacecraft. Uh, what does the insurance cover? Well, for the insurance, because uh, there is two topics for that one. When you are in the rocket, if there is a problem, and you can have that one. But this one is optional. It is not an obligation to take that one. But So we did not take it. We take the risk. Because we are governmental uh, system, so you, you know the, the problem of that one. But when we are in orbit, we need to have insurance, because if you have um, um, an impact with another satellite, you need to have insurance in orbit. It is an obligation for us. Okay, that's very interesting for us because uh, so far our regulators haven't figured that one out yet. You, you did not have this information. Um, there is at the moment in Taiwan there is no requirement for uh, on-orbit insurance. I understand there may be some firms that look into this, but we were not required to by our uh, funding agency. Yes. And I think I don't know for uh, IDEASAT, but uh, for uh, Inspire 5SAT, what we see in orbit uh, since the beginning, we have three, three conjunctions with another uh, satellite. So we, 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 we received alert. I, I have a question. Um, there is a, what is the cause of this uh, uh, your, 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 your when you kill set? Hello. The cost, same thing. It, it's a very interesting question. Because when we go to meeting and people all the time, they explain that when, when, when you develop a CubeSat, you can develop a CubeSat for 100 kilo euro. Uh, for us, it is not possible. Uh, the cost of our system, if I pay all people, if I include all people, 
And if I introduce also operation in orbit, because I, I think you have seen operation in orbit, it's very chronophage. You need to have a lot of people. So for me, huh, cost of one unit or two unit CubeSat is close to 3 million of euro. With all people, all cost. Uh, if you go to a three unit, it is 5 million of euro. So if you develop 10 CubeSat like this, you can decrease the cost. And it's the same for the launch. When we launch a system, some people explain it could be possible to launch um, for ten thousand um, dollars, so ten kilo dollars uh, per kilogram. So it's the same. It's not possible because when we discuss, we have something which is close to eighteen kilo um, dollars per kilogram or per cubesat. I think you have same same things for you, no? Um, certainly. In our case. Uh, the overall cost of IdeaSat was a lot higher than just the uh, cost of flight hardware because, uh, again, we had to uh, develop a f uh, quite a significant portion of our, of our spacecraft hardware. So naturally, there was all the prototyping and the different revisions. And then, of course, once you add in the cost of the people it takes, the uh, engineers and the students that we have to hire and pay to uh, carry out this task, uh, the cost can easily uh, double. Yes, exactly. So, so why I give this price, if this cost, uh, if, if, you, if you had all cost and all facilities that we use, because we use facilities of our country, so the cost is not close to 100 uh, kilo euro. Okay, do we have uh, any other questions from the audience? Please raise your hand or type it in the chat. Uh, so I, I remember you, you mentioned that uh, one of your objectives is eventually to uh, build a constellation of uh, CubeSats to measure the Earth's uh, radiation budget. So if you do decide to go um, on the scale of mass production, if you do decide to do mass production, are you, uh, would, you uh, would, you, would, uh, would you plan to use the simpler uh, 1U design or would you prefer um, uh, something larger scale? Yes, this is very interesting. So f first step, if we go to Constellation, we need to, to build that one with uh, industry Be because we are um, scientific labs. Our objective is science, it is not uh, that one. So we need to, to do that one with a company or with an international um, consortium. So this is the first answer. And after to answer to the one unit CubeSat, for me, it is a test. We test the technology, we test the principle. Uh, what could be very interesting for me could be to develop a six unit CubeSat probably uh, for that one. And like this, we can add additional uh, other um, payload that could be interesting to um, Constellation also. And what we test is to have sensors on all face of a CubeSat. What we test, it is uh, international uh, artificial intelligence and deep learning method to see how possible to reconstruct that one. And what could be also possible, it is to imagine that we can add uh, these, these sensors on commercial uh, constellation spacecraft. So this is our approach. Okay. Um, also, uh, early in the presentation, you also mentioned that uh, one of the uh, uh, questions that you uh, hope to answer and are very interested in is whether there is a long-term uh, downward trend in solar activity. Um, so I know there are many drivers uh, affecting uh, the Earth's climate, including greenhouse gases and also uh, solar activity. Is it safe to say that based on current data, this long-term decrease in solar activity has less of an effect on the climate than uh, greenhouse gases? Uh, okay, yes. If, if you go to that one, if you see solar cycle, solar cycle is an 11 year cycle and a 22 years magnetic uh, cycle. Uh, what we know, we have a variation of 1.3 watt per square meter uh, during the cycle. Impact on the temperature of the Earth is close to 0 0.07 degrees. C's. So it is too small. If you see impact of greenhouse gases, uh, now it is one degree C uh, during the last uh, decade. And what we could have, it is seven degrees C's, um, at the end of two, two, 2100. So it is 100 more than uh, impact of solar variability. But what we did not clearly understand with the solar effect on climate physics, it is the link between the ultraviolet 
variability because ultraviolet variability could increase up to uh, 20%. So you can have very strong variation and that one could have an effect on the um, layers of the atmosphere, on the Earth's atmosphere, and could have a, a strong impact on the uh, local climate. Okay. So, so why we still do that one? Okay. There, there has been uh, some uh, proposals that to offset the effect of climate change that we should launch uh, a sunshade into orbit to essentially block the solar input. How feasible do you think that is? So that, that one is geoengineering. Huh? So yes. That's, 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 so you can have um, uh, a solar um, element that limits the sun. Uh, you can use also aerosol. Right? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you put aerosol on, but you can also have CO2 um, think to limit or to absorb the CO2. For my position and my point of view, it is not a good solution. We need to limit that one because if we do this effect, what we could have, we could have uh, an impact on the global uh, temperature. And this one is a mathematical approach. Huh? For example, you want to limit and to go from seven to four degrees C. So you need to, to limit the sun or to introduce aerosol uh, at the quantities uh, that it could be limit this effect. But the big problem is the effect again of the regional effect. Because if you limit the mean value, you can increase the variance of the effect. And a strong problem of this effect could be an acidification of the sea. And if you create acidification of the sea, you can create a problem in some country. So if you have an action in, an, in, in a one location, you can create an impact in another location. So you can limit the fish in Africa, for example, or in Asia. So it is a very big problem. I don't know if you know this topic in detail, but I can also provide you a lecture about that one and all um, effects that could be. The best solution is to limit our consumption. The best solution is to take a bicycle. Okay. That's uh, definitely, if someone started to perform geoengineering. Uh... Excuse me, Lauren. And the best solution also is to have a food like uh, uh, in Asia to limit, to limit the use of... Uh, harm or not that one, because if you see the impact of methane with all people that um, eat animals each day, it is not a solution also. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, rather than geoengineering, it would be better to, uh, to change our lifestyles to be uh, lower carbon. Yes, exactly. Okay. All right. Are there any additional questions from the audience? Okay, if not, Mustafa, thank you very much for taking the time to uh, share your work. Again, congratulations on uh, UVS QSAT. And uh, again, look forward to hearing more about uh, future missions and also uh, new findings in terms of uh, climatology and its uh, relation to uh, the radiation budget. So thank you very much, Lauren, and thank you all people. And I am very sorry because we have a problem to beginning the meeting. It's okay. There's always unpredictable things, I think, uh, that's anomalies are uh, pretty much part of this business. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.